So let's start uh, today's uh, lecture. Today's lecture is about, about n-gram language models. And today, uh, today's agenda is actually uh, with the n-gram language model. Uh, we will also explain about the uh, weekly assignment uh, and the coding assignment since uh, the today's the earliest day of uh, them. So especially the weekly assignment it's about the use of the uh, cluster uh, in the Pittsburgh Supercomputing Center. So it should be very useful uh, for you to do the uh, uh, time project. So um, I'd like to ask you guys to uh, the check this other uh, uh, weekly assignment uh, carefully. I'm just curious, how many people have ever used the, the some cluster uh, the uh, resources uh, like using the uh, some uh, big computing uh, the machines and using a job scheduler like a grid engine or uh, a slum and so on. How many people have ever used that here? Okay, half of them. It's not bad. So I think this is a very good experience for you to uh, learn uh, this uh, the cluster environment so that we actually put it in the uh, uh, one of our uh, educational uh, the curriculum and then putting in the weekly assignment. With that, you guys can actually use some of the GPU uh, the computing uh, in the Pittsburgh Computing Center. Okay, so uh, the, uh, today uh, the main content, uh, technical content is the language modeling uh, based on n-gram. And before uh, moving to that, I will uh, briefly review uh, entire speech recognition pipeline, especially with uh, 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 HMM-based approaches. So first, uh, the, this, uh, the, the uh, lecture starting speech recognition, other uh, map decision theory, and then we factorize the, uh, the, the problem to the three uh, the, the modularized uh, the problem, uh, acoustic model, a lexicon, and the language model, right? And then uh, we are targeting to the each of the uh, module, acoustic modeling, lexicon, language modeling, and spend a lot of time actually for the acoustic modeling part. Uh, especially mainly we focus on the how to solve the hidden Markov model. Uh, that is actually quite uh, the important even we move to the deep neural network. So uh, the, uh, the hope you guys can uh, the, the, the learn, study uh, this uh, HMM, GMM through the uh, even uh, the uh, coding assignment uh, the, in the uh, deadlines uh, this weekend. And also uh, the several um, uh, midterm uh, the, the uh, questions are actually come from here. And then the another component is lexicon. And the lexicon part, I didn't explain so much about it uh, since because we usually just using the, uh, the uh, rule-based approach, pronunciation uh, dictionary. So basically uh, we use the existing uh, pronunciation dictionary and then uh, getting the mapping uh, from the, uh, the uh, word sequence to the uh, lexicon, uh, sorry, uh, the phoneme sequences. And then the, we use the, uh, the CMU dictionary as an example uh, in one of our uh, the, the, uh, the quiz and so on. And then the last component is language model. So actually with this uh, the three component, uh, uh, we can build the speech recognition and then uh, we can follow this equation and then the, the perform speech recognition based on the acoustic model, lexicon and the language model. So today's part is the last component uh, in this pipeline. And the today's lecture, I will actually follow one of the paper, uh, which is an empirical study of smoothing techniques for language modeling. And this is actually uh, one of the alumni in CMU uh, researchers uh, writing this uh, the review paper. And this is one of the most cited uh, language model paper. So uh, the, I also recommend you guys to also ch check this paper. 
Okay, so let's start uh, the language model. So language model, uh, the last component is actually try to estimate this PW. Okay. And then uh, the, let's uh, the, make a, uh, one example, this sentence, I want to go to my office. And then we can just try to build uh, the, the, uh, this uh, the probabilistic model. So first, uh, similar to uh, what we have done in the previous three, uh, we uh, factorize uh, this uh, probability based on short quiz. Uh, <laughs> can you open that? So uh, that this uh, the, the the short quiz is to uh, the field of uh, which uh, rule uh, that we should use to uh, derive uh, from here to here. Is the first step part of the Sorry? Is the first step of the everything. Okay, 30 more seconds. Okay, uh, close the poll. So uh, I think the still some people made a mistake, but the uh, the actually correct ratio is getting better and better. I am you know asking a quite similar question uh, many times. Um, but as you can see that you know that by the way the the answer is product true. So as you can see that the uh, the product rule, uh, conditional independence assumption, some rule, are uh, actually basic for us to solve this kind of sequential problem. So since uh, the, uh, that's why I kind of asking the many questions several times, and the, some of them may, you know, uh, feel that getting boring, uh, but since this is very important, so I will uh, try to ask, repeat this question several times so that you guys can fully master this technique uh, for the formulation. Okay, so after this other uh, product rule, or some people also call it the probabilistic chain rule, uh, we actually factorize this probability as this factorized form. And the uh, similar to the HMM case or previous cases, this other uh, formulation actually doesn't change any difficulty. So uh, the, we have to uh, the, the tackle uh, this kind of a distribution to solve this one. And then uh, one of the approach is to actually approximate uh, this other uh, probabilistic distribution. That is n-gram. And the other approach is actually try to uh, model this itself with a neural network. That will be the, uh, the uh, one of the lecture uh, in the, uh, the uh, after the, uh, the photo break. Okay, uh, let's move to the uh, explanation about the n-gram then. So n-gram here, we actually using the uh, Markov assumptions. And in this case, we actually try to uh, the, the set the, uh, the sum of the, uh, the, the previous history to be cut, completely cut. And then 
making this other uh, 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 probability to be the fixed uh, length uh, of the history. In this case, uh, the, the, the length of the history would be uh, n minus one. So that is the uh, n-gram assumption. Always, instead of consider entire history, we consider just n uh, the, or n minus one uh, the, the history. Uh, that is the, uh, the n-gram assumption. So uh, this, uh, the Marcos assumption is actually quite uh, the strong assumption, I would say, since it's uh, the eliminating the long range condition. This is sometimes okay, but the uh, language actually has a very long range uh, dependency. So n-gram assumption is not always correct. So I, for example, write this kind of uh, two sentences. First one, I want to go to the CMU campus. And the other one is a little bit of nonsense. Uh, uh, the, a dog wants to go to the CMU campus. Well, some dog might be, but mostly no, right? <laughs> However, regardless of, of this uh, the subjective, if it's you know, human or a dog, that uh, the context doesn't change anything for this uh, go to the CMU campus, this part, if we're using a very limited context. So in this case, uh, the n-gram assumption actually cannot fully understand uh, this uh, the first sentence context. And then just providing the same probability uh, that uh, from here to here, of course, there's some different probability, but from uh, the, the, this uh, the, the, uh, second half of the sentence is, it's actually providing the exactly same score, regardless of the, uh, the subject. So which is a very rough approximation. Although uh, this is actually quite uh, the, the, uh, efficient way to compute uh, the probability. So this approach is widely used. Otherwise it becomes too long and the computation cost is too large, right? Um, so yes. Like, are they equal? Like, are they yes, uh, the, if we compute, for example, this probability, CMU campus, given all of this history, okay, given all of this history to compute this CMU, the probability would be, let's say, 10% or something like that. Uh, in the second case, uh, if, for example, we consider all context and there, there is a dog, this is next sentence is very nonsense, right? So probably this other uh, probability must be lower than this sentence, right? However, n-gram, again, cutting the history. So cutting this, for example, if n-gram only consider one or two previous history, word, so only pair word go to that other kind of history and then computing CMU. Same for this one, second sentences. So actually the probability of computing CMU are equivalent in the Enneagram uh, the, uh, the approximation, which is very nonsense, right? But it's not very bad, by the way. The language is, you know, also has a strong short, long, short range uh, dependency. So it's not completely wrong. And the other, other, other computational efficiency, this approximation is quite valid. But in general, to understand the sentence, Enneagram is not the correct uh, the model. Okay, so uh, the, let's do a little bit more math to understand the Enneagram. And then actually we can find more issue uh, of Enneagram. First, uh, the, we, uh, the, to get the Enneagram probability, we just try to use the maximum likelihood. And then turns out that each other probability is actually estimated based on the uh, ratio of the count. So uh, this other maximum likelihood solution is very intuitive, right? If we try to, for example, get the probability of this, uh, the each of the word. And then this is to make the kind of explanation very simple. 
only consider that we have this one. I want to go to my office. As a kind of our training sentence. Okay. And then try to add a make an enneagram probability. And then, as I mentioned, uh, this is just uh, for the count. So I appeared one time. One appeared one time. Two appeared twice, right? Here and here. Okay. And the go of appeared one time. My appeared one time. Office appeared one time, right? And then total number of uh, word is seven. So in this case, the probability of uh, we will get the I will be one other, uh, divided by seven. And then in this case, it's two appeared actually twice, right? So in this sense, uh, the two have a little bit higher probability than the others. This is very intuitive, right? If we, this is exactly the same. If we scale the uh, data to be very large, like uh, entire uh, the news corpus or entire web other page, basically the uh, way to estimating is quite similar. We can just using the count and then uh, the, uh, the, the probability is uh, proportional to the count. This is a kind of n-gram approach is based on the maximum uh, likely estimation. And uh, this other, uh, other, uh, Enogram is just a unigram. Didn't consider any context. Didn't consider any history, which is I know that we know that this is very weak, right? Next time we will try to actually uh, extend it to the bigram, which we consider the previous context. So uh, the uh, in the unigram cases, actually it's quite interesting since uh, the, the we don't care anything about the order, right? After I want to go to, we just, you know, uh, the, uh, the make this probability to be completely factorized. And the probability is this is multiplication. So it's actually mutable. So actually, interestingly, if we change the order of the, uh, the sentence, like want to go I2, this is also same probability if we're using the unigram. So this is also a little bit weird uh, since that the unigram doesn't consider any context, right? Okay, so probably this is not a good model. Then uh, what we should do, we just consider the context. Let's consider the bigram, which actually consider a previous sentence, a previous word. So to uh, the, represent this probability, I want to go to in the bigram cases. First, I didn't have any other uh, history. So just using the unigram. And next one, want uh, is conditioned by I, previous word. And the two also conditioned by one. And this kind of uh, other uh, continued. Uh, this uh, way, we actually can make the uh, sentence to have some constraint and then making the, uh, the, the probability to be more precise. And if we have a more context, uh, the, this uh, the, uh, the probability becomes more constraint, more context, and possibly more accurate. So sounds like we should use the larger n-gram, right? But it actually has a lot of problem if we try to use the larger uh, the n instead of uh, using the uh, bigram two or trigram three. So let's uh, go through the exactly same uh, maximum likelihood that we have done for the unigram cases. In the bigram cases, we can also having a maximum likelihood solution. And in these cases, count is slightly different. Probably this uh, uh, the previously, uh, this uh, count is just a count for the, uh, 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 the any word, one word, right? But now we consider the context. So then it becomes a combination of the two words to get the count. Still intuitive, right? Because we try to uh, the model the, uh, the combination uh, of the history of the, uh, the, the word and then getting the probability. So uh, this extension is quite also uh, straightforward. 
but this actually makes a lot of problem. Let's say uh, the, the, this uh, the, is the, the count uh, the matrix W and B, and W is here, B here, and then uh, the uh, WB uh, is uh, one when we have our context of I1 and so on. So uh, the, basically this CWB means that we try to find the kind of uh, the, uh, the appearance uh, of the uh, context of word in this, uh, in this matrix. And if we have an n-gram, uh, we will have actually n-dimensional uh, the, uh, the sphere, and then try to uh, get to the count, and then estimating this probability. And as you can see, that if this is the uh, training sentence, I want to go to my office. This uh, matrix is very sparse, right? Almost all parts are zero, except for some kind of other pod, some part uh, of the matrix elements. And this would be uh, that even if we, for example, using the very large corpus, I'm very sure that, that we cannot find all possible contexts, and some part becomes definitely sparse, some part becomes very zero. So uh, that is a more like uh, the, the, uh, the uh, nature of the count, okay? And, uh, the, we have this kind of property, which is very natural because we consider the combination. And then uh, let's uh, 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 use the maximum likelihood estimation. Uh, what happened? Then most of the probability becomes zero. most of the probability becomes zero if it doesn't appear. And then if, for example, have another sentence, previous sentence is, I want to go to my office. And then next sentence, I go to my office. Still valid sentence, right? However, since we don't have a, a count of uh, the goal given i, which is actually completely zero. So probability becomes zero. This means that this sequence cannot be recognized by speech recognition at all, since this probability is completely zero. So this is a problem of the uh, n-gram. So uh, this uh, is uh, the, the, uh, called uh, zero count. Uh, problem. And some people may feel that, no, 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 this is just only one sentence to, you know, uh, the, the correct the count. If we correct the count of the web data or and so on, we can definitely cover uh, almost all this kind of a part, right? This is correct. But then uh, this is uh, the only appeared uh, in the other uh, bigram cases. But if we have a trigram cases, foregram cases, n-gram cases, I'm very sure that this uh, the, the count uh, table becomes very sparse. And then we cannot actually uh, get the, uh, the, uh, the uh, we cannot get the uh, probability uh, of uh, the many contexts, which uh, we will not, uh, the, 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 uh, which we really want to avoid. So this is a kind of a, uh, the problem of the engram. And then I will explain about how to avoid uh, this problem with three other uh, methods. By the way, this uh, the, the problem uh, is zero count problem and solving this problem is uh, called a smoothing. So Ngram itself is not completely perfectly uh, modeling our natural language. We should combine it with a smoothing technique to uh, the computer appropriate probability. One of the most simple method is just adding small value here. Uh, this is called additive smoothing or Laplace smoothing, or if this is one, uh, the people so called the, the, the one addition method and so on. Okay, 
Uh, this approach is quite uh, the simple, but the powerful in terms of we can avoid the zero probability. Even this counterpart is zero, it doesn't go to zero, right? And then we can safely avoid uh, this other uh, part uh, to other uh, that becomes a uh, other uh, irregular value. By the way, this uh, interpolation is very similar to the previous lecture. Uh, we also that show that map estimation, for example, if the count is completely zero, we just using the, some other prior probability. And then if count is uh, the, almost uh, the infinity, uh, this uh, the, the alpha can be the, the, uh, the, uh, uh, the sufficiently small so that we can ignore it. And then this other uh, becomes almost similar to the maximum likelihood uh, the solution and so on. So this uh, additive smoothing method is actually having some similarity or some kind of interpretation uh, based on the Bayesian estimation. However, this alpha based the approach is too simple. It's at least avoid zero count probability problem, and then we can make it work. But this other approximation is too large. And then the people actually are, the, are, the, are proposing the, uh, the second approaches. Uh, this is the interpolation smoothing or generic marker uh, smoothing. And this approach is actually uh, the, the, uh, getting a bit more complicated, but still very reasonable. First, we have a biogram probability. But however, as I mentioned, this will have a risk of getting the zero probability. Why not interpolating it uh, with the unigram probability? This at least will not provide a zero probability in our kind of example, right? So by using the unigram and then uh, doing this kind of uh, interpolation ratio, we could actually uh, avoid zero uh, uh, probability issue again. And uh, compared with the previous approach, like a Laplace smoothing, this is just a alpha. This one can be a little bit more accurate because if we don't have any bigram count and the bigram probability becomes zero, we're just using the unigram probability. This sounds reasonable, right? And actually this is decursively performed. For example, if we using the trigram and if trigram uh, probability, maximum likelihood estimation of the trigram probability becomes zero, we just using the bigram uh, the, the estimation. So this kind of recursive way, uh, making the kind of uh, uh, probability to be smooth by using the previous, uh, previous order uh, of the n-gram. So this uh, approach uh, is uh, actually uh, the first approach, one of the first approach that's used for the language model for speech recognition. And then uh, also note that there's a lambda here, lambda one minus lambda. And then uh, if we consider the, uh, the summation over all uh, the word, it's actually uh, the satisfied sum to one condition. So this actually uh, the, uh, probability is keeping the, uh, the probability constraint. This is also very important, by the way. Okay, so this is the uh, genetic mass smoothing and uh, uh, the, uh, the, the Laplace smoothing and so on. And I also explained about the maximum likelihood estimation of the n-gram. Do you have some questions? Yes. For the trigram, how would this lambda be different? Yeah, it's uh, the, the heuristic, but it can be uh, the, the people just setting it uh, by using the development set and so on. So it's, it's one of the tuning parameter, I would say. Any questions about this father so far? Okay, cool. So uh, there are several uh, the other uh, the, the variations of the smoothing method. Uh, Wittenbell has uh, the absolute discounting. And today I will also uh, explain about, about uh, Neta line smoothing. Uh, this is the one of the state of the art uh, Enneagram, uh, the smoothing technique. 
And I would say that this is a default uh, smoothing technique for many of the n-gram language model. Um, by the way, the, as you can see that uh, uh, the by smoothing techniques are uh, actually named by the other uh, the, the few uh, person's name, right? Jelinek, Mercer, Wittenbell, Katz, uh, Nezanai. And in general, speech field, uh, people actually don't call uh, our method with the ne human name. But the exception is the uh, language model, smoothing part. Uh, this part actually, uh, the, we use uh, the, the uh, inventor's name and then putting that uh, name as a method. So if we, you guys want to, you know, uh, the, how to leave your name to our field, I recommend you guys to work on the smoothing. And also the, uh, the note that uh, it should be less than three, uh, the two people or one people to uh, the, the come up with the, a new name. And then you guys name can be, you know, uh, left in our history as a new smoothing technique. Okay, uh, let's move to the Nezanai smoothing. So Nezanai smoothing, I just kind of providing the equation, which is, uh, looks like a little bit complicated, but the, I will explain each term, uh, the, the, uh, the in term. So first part, this is called the discounting. Uh, this is very similar to the, uh, the maximum likelihood approach, but we actually subtracting some value. Uh, this is actually one of the, uh, the phenomena that the training data and the inference uh, the time of the test data is different. And especially uh, training data cannot fully cover all our kind of, uh, the, uh, the, all of our uh, the, 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 the count uh, in the world. So our kind of training data is always smaller than real uh, the world account if we can count. So uh, to uh, the, uh, model this kind of problem, we actually making the uh, count to be slightly lower, which actually makes the, uh, the, uh, this uh, the, the first term to be more uh, close to the open set, uh, the, uh, the language model uh, the, uh, problem. So this uh, discounting uh, term is often used. Uh, there are two nodes. First, you know, this part should not be negative. So if it goes to negative, we just using a zero. And then uh, we just using the uh, second term, which is by the way, corresponding to the backhole. And then the other, other, other uh, node is that this delta and the, uh, the lambda uh, is related because we have to consider the sum to one condition. We have to satisfy the sum to one condition so that the delta and the lambda b is always has some relationship. But anyway, uh, this uh, first term is actually one of the kind of a variant uh, of the other uh, maximum likelihood estimate, I would say. The important part is the second term. Previously in the Jelinek Mansar uh, the smoothing, I use a unigram or a n minus one gram as a kind of an interpolation uh, the, uh, the candidate. And the which I said that it's very reasonable, right? Yes, it is very reasonable, but it's actually not fully reasonable. And then we need to actually consider the other statistic rather than just considering the previously estimated n gram. So that I will explain uh, with some example. So first, let's check these two sentences. I cannot see without my reading glasses. I cannot see without my reading Francisco. Which one is more likely happened in our natural language? Yeah, glasses, right? I actually don't know what, how, <laughs> Leading Francisco uh, the, make some meaning in this sentence. However, uh, this uh, approach, uh, these uh, sentences are very famous example that uh, uh, the, the unigram based smoothing is failed. Actually, when we count the number of the 
uh, the, uh, the Francisco appeared in the uh, World Two Journal sentences and then glasses. Actually, uh, Francisco is way more than glasses. So if we don't have, for example, reading glasses or reading Francisco in the context, and then we try to use a back off problem, a back off probability, uh, the, this, the second term. And then this second term, as I mentioned in the Jelinek method, uh, the, the uh, smoothing method, uh, we just using the unigram probability. And then which is more likely in terms of unigram. Actually, Francisco is more likely. This is quite uh, the, the wrong, <laughs> but uh, the, if we just using the uh, unigram smoothing, this kind of weird situation happen. By the way, why uh, Francisco happens so many in, the, in our corpus? In our, uh, like for example, this count, I just did it in the Wall Street Journal sentences. The reason is that the, we have a word San Francisco. Okay, San Francisco happens everywhere. For the Wall Street Journal, at least, are the more than glasses. So this is quite natural that Francisco can be actually selected uh, if we're using the unigram probability. However, uh, there is another interesting property. Francisco is almost always appeared after, uh, before the sun, right? So it's actually the, uh, the variation of the context is very, very small. Glasses actually can happen many contexts. So this is actually very important information. So, uh, for example, uh, in the net analysis smoothing, focus on this kind of uh, uh, the how uh, this uh, the following uh, the words have uh, the, the more variations given uh, this uh, the previous uh, the uh, word. Again, San Francisco, most of the cases, San Francisco, or I found several other Mr. Francisco and so on in the corpus, by the way. And the totally, I count how many unique uh, the, the, the word pair that's you know, uh, the having a Francisco in the second word. It's uh, the 58. It still happened. Again, you know, it's a name, it's his name. So it is used for several times. Mr. Francisco is the one example. But again, grasses actually have the more variations uh, the color, the foreign, uh, wears, uh, and so on. And it turns out that glasses have more variations. And then let's using this statistic, other, other smoothing method. This is the Nezanai smoothing. So uh, the Netanai smoothing is actually using this uh, the, the number of unique counts instead of previously estimated uh, the, the n-gram statistic and then smoothing it. So uh, this is a kind of final equation. Uh, this is the, this case uh, we I just using the uh, uh, bigram cases, but it can be applied to the n-gram. Uh, the, the generalized to the n-gram. But anyway, uh, the, our straightforward uh, the, the, uh, the method can be using the previously estimated uh, n-gram, which has an issue, San Francisco problem. And then uh, instead of uh, the, the using uh, the count, we just using the uniquely uh, the, the occurred uh, the variations uh, as a score which actually uh, making the, uh, the, back, uh, the, the, the smoothing uh, more accurate uh, than uh, the, this uh, approach in general. So this uh, method is called Nedanai smoothing. 
And this one is actually uh, the coding assignment tree, which uh, you guys uh, the will uh, the implement uh, by yourself. By the way, this is uh, way easier than coding assignment. <laughs> so <laughs> I guess many people are now struggling about it, but coding assignment three is a bit easier. <laughs> okay, yes. Um, very small cases, yes, but any of the methods actually have a similar problem. And my experience, even very small cases, uh, necessarily is always uh, the robustly working. Yeah. To make it work on, like, for to fix the zero probability case, can we just add alpha? Uh, still, necessarily is working. Yeah, still, necessarily is working. My experience, yeah. And then the uh, the I say that it's working or it's you know uh, the 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 beta. Uh, the, how do we kind of evaluate language model? Of course, one approach is uh, the throw it combined with the speech recognition and then uh, doing a speech recognition performance. This is one possibility to evaluate the uh, language model. Uh, the other uh, the the uh, language model evaluation measure is called the perplexity. This is actually uh, the just throwing the test set, uh, the sentences, given our kind of estimated uh, the, uh, the n-gram probability, and then getting the, uh, the probabilistic value. Uh, this is more like a likelihood. But uh, it actually can be changing depending on the length of the count. So we just kind of normalize it with the length. Uh, that is a kind of a uh, the measure, and the people call it as a perplexity. And uh, this other uh, perplexity, uh, generally a uh, lower perplexity is better. And this perplexity is actually quite reflecting speech recognition performance. And then uh, the, the, this other uh, perplexity is quite widely used as a uh, the, the language model measure. So this. Uh, is our, uh, the one of the perplexity uh, measures that I computed for uh, the uh, time five uh, the, uh, speech recognition corpus. Okay, uh, let's check uh, the, uh, the comparison of the absolute smoothing, which is just adding the alpha. And I forgot which alpha I put, probably latent, uh, 0.1 or something like that. Uh, but anyway, I, I I tuned a little bit. But anyway, uh, the alpha uh, based approach having this perplexity and the nether nine actually having a quite large uh, improvement in terms of the perplexity, I would say. And then another discussion is that if we have a more context, what happens? Actually, up to trigram we can observe some improvement. And from trigram to program, the improvement becomes small, even uh, the, with the kind of a, uh, the smoothing method, uh, that we couldn't actually get so many uh, the n-gram counts here. And then the, uh, the, the language model performance uh, is uh, not to improve so much. Of course, this uh, the, the uh, result can be changed if using a very large amount of data. If, for example, uh, if we using the web scale data and so on, probably we can use the four to five uh, the, uh, gram. But the six gram, seven gram, I believe the perplexity would be saturated. And for speech recognition, uh, the people usually using the uh, trigram or four gram, because if we have a more uh, context, computation cost also becomes larger. So actually this part is uh, the one of the drawbacks of the n-gram based approaches. Uh, this uh, the estimation process is very simple. Uh, however, we have to memorize all the kind of uh, a combination of the context and the corresponding uh, value. So it's almost like a lookup table. We didn't have to compute so much about the uh, value, but it becomes very uh, the, the, uh, the 
it becomes very large in terms of the memory. So this is another reason that the people also using the uh, neural network uh, language model, which I will explain uh, later. So anyway, uh, this is uh, the today's summary. I explained the n-gram language model and the n-gram is efficient in terms of using the Markov process, but we have a zero count problem. And the smoothing technique uh, that uh, largely mitigate uh, this uh, issue and so on. And the last comment is that Ngram is still widely used. Ngram is still widely used in even in the end-to-end -end ASR systems and so on, since it is very easy, simple, and so on. And another big uh, the benefit of the Ngram is that if we have a new word, we can easily uh, the, uh, the, uh, register this new word to the Ngram because this is just a count. So we just compute a count and then uh, the, the changing the, uh, the language model, that's it. So we can easily uh, the adding the uh, new word, which is very difficult for end-to-end -end system in general. So due to that uh, Ngram language model is uh, widely used. Uh, uh, that's it uh, for this lecture. And do you guys have some questions about it?